Well, hello and welcome to Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you again. Uh, today, we've got some big questions here. How long can a human go without food for? How long can a human go without water for? And what have you eaten today? Maybe make some guesses on those. Maybe write those questions down. Because I'd like you to have a think about that for a moment. Because we're going to get our cheesy intro music. Just in a moment. And then I'm going to give you those answers. So how long can a human go without food for? How long can a human go without water for? What have you eaten today? Here's our cheesy intro music. Okay, so welcome back. Here's the answers. I must admit, I don't think I would last this long. A human can go for more than three weeks without food. More than three weeks without food. That, that's ridiculous. A human can go without food for about three weeks, but it would typically only last three to four days without water. So you, you kind of need water. Three to four days without water, but three to four weeks without water food it's just shocking that I couldn't go half a day um, and what have you eaten today well I'm not gonna ask you to feed back back on me because I, I'd only get hungry anyway um, so what we've got uh, hopefully you've got your pen and paper please ignore the date that's above my head that was the day I've recorded this on um, so our title today is how does Psalm help Muslims faith today how does Psalm help Muslims faith today we are looking at the five pillars of Islam we have done Hajj we've done an overview today we're looking at Psalm so we're we're going to know the origins, duties, benefits and exceptions of fasting during Ramadan. OK, so that's our objective to know the origins, duties, benefits and exceptions of fasting during Ramadan. It's going to be a good outcome if you can describe the origins, duties, benefits and exceptions of fasting. It's going to be great if you can explain the importance of fasting to Muslims and even better if you can evaluate if the practice of Psalm needs to be updated for today's world. Uh, as usual please pause me as we go. So today we have thought about food food food. We're going to look at some key words. We've got a media clip, we've got a guess the time, we've got some advice and then a reflection activity to do. So first off here are some key terms. I would like you to make a note of these in your book please. So uh, Ramadan, fasting and so on. I'm not going to read them out to you. You can read them there really well. But please make a note of those. Change the words around if you want to. Remember copying is not learning. But if you can put them in your own words that would be amazing. So pause me now and let's get that done. Brilliant. OK, so the next thing I'd like you to do is to do a mind map with the word psalm in the middle of it. OK, psalm. And uh, we've got two different media clips I'm going to show you. One is from behind the news and one is from the Atlantic. One's about um, what Ramadan, what fasting's been like during lockdown, which I think is quite fascinating for the time of what we're in at the moment. And the other one is uh, slightly more general with regards to some. So I would like you to watch this and uh, they're, they're going to come up in a moment. And around your mind map, I'd like you to make some notes, please. So try and get 15, 20 bits of information from these because there is a, a load here. Um, I will see you in a few minutes. Let's enjoy. <laughs> This is the first food 14-year-old Ali and his family have had all day. They haven't had anything to eat or drink since sunrise this morning. It's because they're celebrating a special time of year in their religion called Ramadan. Ali is a Muslim, which means he follows the religion of Islam. During the month of Ramadan, most Muslim people do something called fasting. 
that means they don't eat or drink anything between sunrise and sunset for a whole month. They can't even drink water through the day. It's pretty tough, but for people like Ali, it's a really important part of his religion. It's just to feel how the poor people feel. You know, they don't get to have a lot of water and food, so that's mostly what it's about. Uh, it's a test, yeah. Just like other religions, Islamic people have certain times of the year to celebrate their faith, and Ramadan is one of them. During that month, they spend more time thinking about their religion, kind of like Christmas or Easter for Christians, or Rosh Hashanah for Jewish people. During Ramadan, Muslim people learn more about the Islamic religion by reading from their religious book, which is called the Quran. And the fasting is to help them focus on that. Each year, Ramadan starts on a slightly different date, because the name Ramadan is actually the name of a month in the Islamic calendar. And that calendar is a little bit different because it's based on the cycles of the moon. Although many Muslims don't eat or drink through the day during Ramadan, they do have some extra big meals before dawn and after sunset. Because having no food or water at all for a whole month would be impossible. But even with these big meals, Ali says Ramadan can still be pretty hard. It's a little bit hard, especially if you have, like sometimes we have football games and yeah, we still play, but yeah, we, we don't drink water. And he and his cousins say going to school can be tricky too. Usually my friends come with these amazing lunches from like different places and then I'm like in the classroom and they're all eating their lunch in recess and I'm led like, you know, waiting for the bell to go and stuff, so that's probably the hardest part. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard. I get, I get hungry really easily, so... I haven't told anyone about it because I moved to this new school and I haven't uh, fasted there yet. Tomorrow will be my first day fasting at my new school. Around the world, there are more than 1.6 billion Muslim people. That's almost one quarter of the world's population. But not all of them fast during Ramadan. People who are pregnant, elderly, or people who are sick often don't. And kids only start doing it after they've reached puberty. But some do practice fasting before then, often just for a few days. Ali has been fasting for Ramadan since he was 10, and he says it's a bit easier this time. Oh, it was really hard back then. You get more used to it. And although it's a tough month, these guys love learning about their religion. And it doesn't hurt that there's a big party called Eid when the month wraps up. At the end we get this big celebration, we go to the mosque and do like our morning prayer and stuff like that. And it's like really fun to meet up with family and stuff. We just a lot of food, we're allowed to eat, yeah, so, and there's rides and it's a lot of fun. Ramadan can be a real challenge, but these guys wouldn't have it any other way. During Ramadan, we celebrate what it means to feel hunger. Allah, 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 Allah. This is the first time in 1400 years that people have been told don't come to the mosque, Allah. to stay home. Come, Ali, I need you to get, give this to Yusuf. Yusuf, that one don't close it up yet. My name is Sharon Mustafa. I'm an entrepreneur, I own my own business. I'm a mom of six. Hey guys. I'm Muslim American, that lives in Brooklyn, New York. Look, it's, it tells you what it is right here. So it's an image is a picture. Or a photograph that helps the reader. Ramadan is a Muslim holiday. It's a month actually, it's one of the months of the year. We fast from the pre-dawn to sunset. People are usually breaking their fast together. You go over to your family's house or friends, but this year it's not that way. Oh. COVID has been spreading for over two months now in the United States. Over a million people have already been infected and tens of thousands of people have died. The mosques are closed, so even if I wanted to go, I can't. No friends, definitely no friends. I'm pretty strict with that. I mean, there's no friends. Um, they can't even go scooter around the block because I'm just worried. 
It's a big responsibility. I have six kids. Medicine, right? And now there's a germ going around, and we have to be very careful. And there's a lot of You want to clap for the first responders right now? Clap, just clap. Last year, we'd break our fast with my grandma and aunts. Then we would go pray at the mosque and come back. We'd get maybe ice cream. It's a blessed month where we're supposed to be as close to God as possible. This year, it's like, well, we're stuck at home. We can't see anybody. We can't go anywhere. Are you scared? Um, a little bit, yeah. It makes people sick. That's true. What? So. 600, you jump 100 more. Where do you end up? Mama, I want to guide them. Like 10. My faith tells me that you plan, but God is the best of planners. It's going to be okay. Eventually, it will be okay. You just have to get through it with patience and perseverance. Growing up here as a first generation Egyptian Muslim girl, it, it was tough. No, there was no guidance in terms of what to expect. Right around the time I was in college is when I decided I want to start wearing a headscarf. It was hard to figure out how to get dressed. I was so tired of all the energy it took to shop. I decided I'm going to just start my own company. I'm just going to do it. Thank you. And this one's yours. Can you give it to you, sir? Or you want to do it? You want to try it? Urban Modesty is one of the first companies okay, dedicated come, come, to trendy, yeah. modest clothing for no, Muslim women. Just put it on the counter top a little bit. Yeah. This is where we fill our orders from. Thank you. Um, since COVID started, we brought all our stuff into my basement, pretty much. Thankfully for us, business has been actually booming. There's a huge demand for online stores right now, especially online stores that sell what we sell. Is it crunchy? We just broke our fast. We uh, usually break our fast with uh, a call to prayer and then we make a quick prayer out loud or you could just make a, it's called diet where you just call for whatever you, make a prayer for whatever you want and then we usually have dates and some milk which is a, a tradition of uh, our prophet and uh, yeah, we're just eating traditional Egyptian food. What's good though? It's like the happiest moment ever of the day, usually. <laughs> Everybody is jumping for joy. Do you ever have moments where you see this tragedy and doubt what you believe? No. It's a test. Nobody is going to be put on earth just so that you could cruise control through it. There's no point then. Uh, you're going to be tested and we, you just have to, like I said, persevere and be patient with the test. Ramadan also teaches you to be grateful for everything you have. It's a difficult time to be a mom or to have a business or any of that, but there are a lot of people that are far worse off. Okay, so we said it would be good if we could describe the origins, duties, benefits and exceptions of fasting. Hopefully you've got some of that information now and we've started to think about uh, the importance of fasting for Muslims. So here is uh, a little bit of information for you. Ramadan is known as the month of fasting because Muslims fast. They go without food and drink during daylight hours for a whole month. They get up every day before sunrise in order to eat and drink enough to keep them going till sunset. 
And then when the fast is broken, Muslims are allowed to eat until sunrise the following day. The evening meal is often shared with family and friends, or at least it would in normal times, uh, followed by extra prayers and readings from the Quran. So I was thinking in my kind of weird thinking way, if it varies from daylight hours, what exactly are the daylight hours? So I looked at um, the 30th of April, which was the end of fasting in 2020. I wonder what time uh, people had to fast in these cities. So we've got Wellington, Johannesburg, Madrid, Kemi, Liverpool and Moron, which is actually the most southern um, town in the world. There you go. As an interesting fact, I had to look that up. Um, and Kemi is the most northerly so in the world. So there you go. Um, what I'd like you to do is try and match the daylight hours with the location. OK, so they have to fast. Muslims fast during these times. So in your books, write down the places and write down the times that you think they go to. I will go through these answers in a moment with you. So pause me now and see if you can work it out. OK, so here are the answers. So you've got uh, 5.38 to 8.40 is Liverpool, where I am very nearly at and I do work in. Uh, we've got uh, Madrid is just below that 7.18 to 9.06. You've got uh, Johannesburg 6.30 till 5.40, give or take. Kemi 4.51 to 9.59. Uh, then you've got Wellington, which is 7.06 to 5.29. And then you've got Moron, Moron, uh, 8.49 to 6.10. And it made me think, which is it hardest to do Ramadan in? Well, I'd say it's pretty hard to do in the UK. 5.38 in the morning to 8.40 at night. That's a pretty long day. Kemi even worse 4 51 in the morning to almost 10 o'clock at night i mean that would just be a killer so what i'd like you to do in your books now is there are three questions here which would be easiest to complete ramadan in and why which would be the hardest and are there any jobs that you think would make ramadan difficult to do okay are there any jobs that you think would make ramadan difficult to do so pause me now and give those three questions a go have a real good think about a third one nice little careers work related learning link there okay so um what we've got here then is uh, some of the issues that people might face when they're fasting so you're gonna, uh, you've got four different scenarios that I've put behind you here. I know what it says there about each group's been given three different scenarios. I'm, I'm like to choose one of these four that I've put on the screen behind me. Uh, I would like you to say what difficulties you think the person might face, um, why you think they should fast, or do you think they should fast, and what advice would you give them as well? So the first one is Sarah has three young children at home and has to look after them on her own. The second situation, Maria works in a restaurant in Manchester and has been given lots of shift to work during the month of Ramadan. The third one, Ramadan has begun and so has the football season. Uh, Kwasim has trials for his local team and he doesn't know whether he should fast or not. And lastly, you've got Hanan is in year 11. He's going to start his GCSEs during the month of Ramadan. OK, so I'd like you to pause me now and choose one of those situations, write it out and then explain uh, your response to those three questions and then come back to me. OK, brilliant. So this is sort of our final big question of the day. Um, so it's Ramadan should be for a fixed 10 hours each day. Right? This is part of our third learning objective, if you remember, which was um, it even better if you can evaluate if the practice of Sorm needs to be updated for today's world. So the uh, knowing that all around the world that Ramadan happens for a different length, or should I say fasting happens for a different length, the, the question is this, Ramadan should be for a fixed 10 hours each day. Okay, so fasting, should I say, should be fixed for a 10 hours each day. You're going to evaluate this statement. In this answer, I'd like you to refer to Muslim teachings. I'd like you to give some developed arguments to support the statement, some arguments from a different viewpoint, 
and to reach a justified conclusion as well. Remember, you need to show some keywords um, and the definition of what Ramadan is and fasting. Give examples to support your ideas while everything that we've looked at. Um, this will take you probably 10 to 15 minutes if you do this really well. Please send it through to us as your teachers. We would love to have a look at it and we would love to give you some feedback. So thanks very much for your time. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Wash hands. God bless you. And uh, I will see you soon. Just leave this on the screen and then you'll be able to get on with it. Bye.